Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So it is a lot going on right now. Now, everybody's been trying to figure out this whole Jeannie Mai and GZT. Everybody wants to know why all of a sudden they're getting divorced. It's been less than three years. You know, a lot of folks, not me and probably not none of y'all, but a lot of people on social media did look to them as couple goals. Let's keep it real. A lot of people are brokenhearted about this. And so people want to know, like, you know, what happened? Why are they breaking up? I mean, hell, let's not even forget the, the you know, late Kevin Samuels even had a video dedicated to this. Uh, this was his couple goal. He said, high value men choose wives like Jeannie Mai and not Lonnie Love, okay? Somebody sent me that screenshot the other day. I haven't watched the video. I don't know what he says in the video. That just made me cackle. He had made that two years ago. So it's very interesting, you know, he supposedly chose a high value woman, but yet and still two years later, probably to the day that he made that video, who knows, child? he's not running to go file for divorce. And he's saying that, you know, there's no chance of reconciliation. So this is what's being reported right now by page six. I guess a family source, quote unquote, is spilling the tea child. So they are saying that basically the reason why Jeezy filed for divorce last week, um, they have different views and each felt like their needs weren't being completely met. So this whole situation is super messy. Everybody's trying to figure out the tea. That's what the inside source is saying. So I want y'all to go ahead and check out this news clip really quick and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Married life feels 1000% different than when we were dating. New details on Jeezy and Jeannie Mai going their separate ways after two years of marriage. Jeezy and I are a team. Just days after ET learned the rapper filed for divorce from the TV host, we're now hearing the two weren't on the same page when it came to certain family values and expectations. And we all know what we want. We want to feel trusted. We want to feel loved. We want to feel safe. Our source adding they had different views and each felt like their needs weren't being completely met. How's everything? Amazing. How's the Family's baby? great. Baby's big. That's Jeezy speaking with E.T. in June, no warning signs, but gushing over the couple's almost two-year-old daughter, Monaco. Yeah, it's calling me daddy now, so we there. According to Jeezy's filing, a prenup was signed and there is no hope for reconciliation. I cannot believe, as every parent will tell you, how much a child changes your life. Right. And Jeezy is seeking joint custody of their little girl. It's not hard to get away because I have a village, my family. My mama might think she gave birth. <laughs> my husband's parents are hands on too. So God, God, thank you, thank you, for my daddy. Hey daddy. Just last week, Jeannie and Monaco celebrating his memoir on Instagram. And God, God, thank you. Thank you. Because my daddy, hey daddy. made the New York Times bestsellers list. The love story's end comes four years after their first milestone, making their romance Instagram official with this pic in September 2019. The great thing about our love is we have flaws but we embrace working through them. I've never had that with somebody right. before. All right. Of course, the pandemic hit months later, which Jeannie says fast-tracked their commitment, ending with their I do's in 2021. You both are sitting together and haven't had an earnest conversation about how life has been lately. Like, just simplicity, it's beautiful. We looked at each other <laughs> after, or, you know, um, by this time of the quarantine, and then we were like, yo, if we make it through this, we are gangster. I am very excited to share that Monaco Mai Jenkins is a girl. <laughs> the real host sharing her pregnancy journey with fans and later not shying away from the challenges she faced after giving birth. I could have done without was the postpartum anxiety. Tough, that's tough. Yeah. How was that? How was that for you? It was, it was, honestly it was treacherous. I got some help. I did, I did get, you know, I, I saw a psychologist. Now, less than a week after the news dropped, they've yet to address the split on social media. We want to feel cuddles. We want to feel, you know, the romance. Like, you want all those things. And so the fact that I'm doing that with a partner that is like-minded with me is the best part of my life. 
All right, y'all. So you guys just saw that news clip. Now, something else that's very interesting, because there's just been a lot of rumors, a lot of people, again, trying to figure out what is it about them? Why did they break up? Why are they no longer together? And there's been all types of rumors from Jeannie Mai cheated on Jeezy um, with Mario Lopez, because sometimes they do host in together. So that was one of the rumors. And honey, the T is... Basically, Mario Lopez is a bit too friendly with Jeannie. If y'all see this video of them, Jeannie's teaching him how to speak Vietnamese. Um, and he got his hands around her waist. And you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that they messing around in them, but it's very flirty. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of really flirty energy. They're touching each other. You can tell they definitely have a really good vibe with each other. She definitely was not like that with her ex-husband, Freddie. When he would come to The View, they both looked miserable as hell. She even called him a Mitch one time. She had some choice words to describe you in an earlier show. Take a look. I feel like I married my version of a Mitch. Really? Yes. When he's sick and his mom is around, it's a totally different man that I don't even know. Ah. You stood up real quick. Do you know what a Mitch is? I just found out what that is today. It's a male. Yeah. What, what do you have to say about this description <laughs> of you? You know, one word that she brings up a lot is compassion for people's situations. You no, know, you can sit down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you scare me right now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm just looking for some compassion in, in situations, you know? Yes. Like, from your if mother. I, if I, yes, because if I don't get it at home, at least I can get it from my mother, you know? Oh. Honey. Like I said, something ain't right. Something ain't clean in the buttermilk. Who calls their husband a Mitch on national television? So if she's willing to say that on national television, imagine the type of things that she may say behind the scenes, child. I don't see Jeezy putting up with being called a Mitch. I'm just saying. So she definitely didn't give Freddie that vibe. And then the fact that Mario Lopez, honey, done kissed the baby. Child. I wonder how Jeezy felt about that. Hi, I'm with my girl, Jeannie Mai. First day at the job, guys. A <laughs> proud uh, Vietnamese girl. We're both yeah. first generation. And you win. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. And then, how would I say please? Lam ong. Lam ong. Lam ong. N U M. That's my go to sentence. I mean, okay, then I'll give you one more. Okay, give me one How do I like, hi? Okay, give me one more. Like to win or over? Alright. En le Ooh, that means maybe you're beautiful. En le bois. Up in here. Mama. What are you doing? What are you doing? I know. So I'm just telling y'all what the streets of TikTok are saying. I'm not saying she cheated with Mario Lopez. I'm just here to report the damn news, okay? Then a video started circulating online yesterday that went viral. And basically in this video, Jeannie Mai is admitting that Jeezy has called out her anger issues. So it's a, it's a clip that's basically resurfaced. And so she's talking about this. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this clip and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Called me out on it. I didn't notice that I had a hot temper until I got with Jeezy. And here's a person who is my equal and I really respect. And when I would spew some of my old habits and he was like, uh-uh, like who, that's not flying here. And also it would trigger him to come back at me with things where I was like, who the f do you think you are? But I was triggering him, but he never told me to fix my temper. He, I just saw it and I thought, it, unless I want to stay in this place, where I lose this person I love and I stay in my comfort zone of doing what I want to do and function the way I have for the last 40 years when nobody else had to stop me. Which obviously has done quite well for you. Right, I could have. But this was something greater that I wanted and also a great challenge to myself to say, what if now that I know it exists and the dragon's there, what if I got rid of that? How do I kill that dragon or store it in its place so that it never creates havoc? All right, so you guys just saw that video. And it's very funny that when she talks about her anger issues, you know, her attitude, she tries to call it something cute. She calls it the dragon, okay? I've also seen people attach, you know, spicy. When Latino girls are upset, oh, they're being spicy. So I guess, I guess the Asian girls use dragon for their attitude. But, you know, when it's black women, we're just ghetto. We're ratchet. We're hood rats. You know, we're attitudinal. We don't get cute names. We just get a bunch of bullshit. But it's all good. <laughs> you know, this entire situation is a mess. Like I said, I'm not going to celebrate anybody's divorce. You know, that's not my thing. 
But I also feel like it's sad because it's such a short time for them to just up and throw in the towel. Like I low key feel like Jeezy probably put more work in the streets than he did into this marriage. For him, he's not dealing with the mood swings, the attitudes. And so for him, it's just easy to go file for divorce. I think for her, she was used to the white guy that she was dating. He was probably willing to put up with a lot more stuff from her. And Jeezy's not willing to have it. He's like, yo, I'm a rapper. I've been in these streets. I'm, you know, I make good money. I'm writing books. I'm, you know, handling my business. And if you're not going to act accordingly, I'm out. You're not going to talk to me crazy. You're not going to talk down to me. You know, there's only going to be so much I'm going to accept. Um, and I'm sure he has that same mentality towards any woman that he's dating. So she even said she had to kind of check her attitude and, you know, check her anger issues. So it's very interesting. I think, honestly, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. You know, it takes two to make a marriage and it also takes two to, you know, basically mess up a marriage in the end. So I think there's some fault on her and there's also some fault on him. But until both of them come out and speak, all we can do is just guess and speculate and try to put pieces together on social media. Hell, we don't even know who this source is, but they don't gave the source a whole write-up and, you know, an ET video. So it's going to be very interesting when they do decide to speak. But either way, it's sad because, you know, for them to say the reason why they're, well, for the source to say the reason why they're breaking up is because, you know, they have different values and expectations these are conversations that should be had before walking down the aisle. You know, marriage is serious. You're taking vows before not only your friends and family, but before God. So, you know, when you're talking about family values and trying to find somebody that you're equally yoked with, these are conversations that you have to have before walking down the aisle and especially before having children. And I think the problem is so many people move off of lust. You know, they move off of the honeymoon phase when everything is cool. But when you add a baby to the mix, it definitely changes the whole dynamic. And once that honeymoon phase wears off and the, and the good sex, uh, now, now the new peen is kind of, you know, getting repetitive. What else do y'all have in common? What else are y'all strengths? You know what I'm saying? How can y'all help each other's weaknesses? And I think these are conversations, and I'm not saying that they didn't have these conversations, but that a lot of people are going through. They're just seeing the wedding and the invites and the social media pictures and, you know, the viral videos, but they're not really putting work into the marriage. They're looking at the aesthetic. Do we look good together? Do we compliment each other? You know, but they're not really doing the nitty gritty to get to know each other because to say that the divorce is due to family values and expectations to me is kind of silly because these are conversations that should have been had well before there was ever a family, let alone a marriage. So anyways, child, in other news, we got to talk about this situation with Monique and Countess Vaughn. So if you guys do not know, about five months ago, um, Monique came out and basically said she was going to she was going to sue CBS and Paramount over Parker royalties. Now, if you guys did not know, um, Monique had her show back in the day where she played Nikki Parker. Countess Vaughn was also on that show, and we love the Parkers. And so this is what she wrote a few months ago. I'm going to go ahead and read that to y'all. So Monique says, today we filed a lawsuit to make sure that we are fairly paid and that we are owed for the Parkers. Actors rely on the good faith of the Hollywood companies to honor their profit and participation agreements. The Parkers was a huge success and continues to be a source of revenue through syndication and streaming channels. To further make my point, the executive producers of the Parkers took legal action for the same concerns that I have, and they've already settled. Unfortunately, all too often, the talent gets kept in the dark. We are looking forward to shedding some light on this subject. So that is what she wrote five months ago, and today her and Zaddy, honey, <laughs> they put together a video basically further explaining the situation. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. Hey, my sweet babies, I'm Monique. And I'm Sydney. And we're coming to y'all today to let you know we're standing with all the unions that are striking right now. And we have a story that we must share of our own with the community. Countess Vaughn and I did a show called The Parkers. The Parkers has now been on air for 24 years. And they're trying to convince us through our ownership of the show that we made absolutely no money. And it's baffling being that when you have a conversation with the executive producers and they allude to the fact that the show in its entirety, five years, was made for under $70 million. 
It went out of production in 2004, but by 2009, we see profit participation statements that show the program made over $700 million, but yet was in a close to a billion, if not a billion dollar deficit. So what we're asking you, CBS, is can you please treat these two black women fairly? When our brother Dave Chappelle, who ironically had a deal with CBS, said he signed the deal out of desperation and it was a bad deal, they were able to go back and do the right thing. And they made that deal fair and they paid Dave Chappelle what he rightfully deserved. What we're asking you, CBS, don't pay us any more, but don't pay us any less. And the reason why we're having this conversation out loud for the community to hear is this. We see the numbers and they still don't want to pay. What will happen to you when you don't even know the numbers exist? So we're asking you, and when we say community, we mean community as in the ones that's fighting for equality. Will you stand with us? CBS, will you treat us fairly? We love y'all for real, my babies. All right, so you guys just heard what Monique and Sydney had to say. I'm going to say this. They both look good with all that gray. They look good. They just look mature. She looks beautiful. You know, a lot of people run and dye their hair and all that stuff. She really can rock it. And he looks nice too. So they just look like a, you know, older, you know, couple. I like the color scheme. We see you, Monique and Sydney, honey. Um, but yeah, this entire situation is crazy. Also, Savannah Garcia had posted a clip. I guess she has some type of reality TV show and Countess Vaughn was on there. And Countess Vaughn also spoke on it as well. So let me go ahead and play that clip for you. Uh, Savannah was sharing it or, you know, saying people. Savannah was telling folks in the shade room to check it out. So I went to go check it out. So y'all go ahead and check out this video as well. Speaking of that, um, coming up together, you know, girl, what's going on? I've been sending the, I've been sending the blogs. Girl, that you, it's some sewing going on, all that. You know, yeah. girl, you, you, it's been a long time that you've been fighting that. You remember that. when I told you a long time ago about that situation. Me and Monique just had a conversation like, they ain't right. And we want to make it right. And hopefully through uh, the right lawyers and prayer and just our fans supporting us that we'll be able to move forward in, in what we are deserved. Right. Because it's so not they're not cool. paying you your coins. No, they're not paying. They're not doing what's right by us. After, you know, we've been working with them for clearly 20 years. Right. And they should have more respect for what they, how they treat us. And so that's that's all it is. But God got it. I've been, you know, going without all this time. All right, so you guys just saw that video. Now, what else is sad is that in the comments of the Shade Room, there were many celebrities, you know, that were in there speaking and basically saying that they're not receiving their money and they want their money. Marcus Polk, who played on Moesha and several shows throughout the 90s and the 2000s, says the game owes me money and I want every penny, okay? I'm sure he's talking about the TV show, The Game, or maybe he's talking about the industry game in general, but he says he wants his money. Another person who was going off in the comments was Miss D. Now, y'all know I'm a big fan of Bring It. I have been watching that show from day one. I don't have daughters, so those girls on the show were like my, you know, TV daughters. And so to see Miss D in the comments, she was adding Lifetime. She says, at Lifetime and at Bring It, I'm coming. I want every penny. OK, on top of that, Tammy Roman also was in the shade room. She wrote a big old dissertation. So this entire situation is crazy. But I have been saying this for a while now. Um, even when we did the meet and greet in Atlanta, I had broke it down as to how these um, actors and actresses are being robbed via streaming. You know, to me, while we all love the convenience of streaming and we don't have to worry about buying a bunch of DVDs and v VHSs and all that stuff. To me, the streaming situation was something put together by the executives, by the movie and the TV studio, so that way they could get a bag. Because there were certain rights that was held for actors and producers and, and you know writers and stuff like that when it comes to television. And these were rules that were written in place back in the 40s. I've talked about this in previous videos. But what they did with the streaming networks is create their own side deals. You had the studios creating these multi-million dollar deals 
with the streaming networks and they basically cut everybody else out. It was about the networks and it was not about the actors, the talent, the writers, none of that stuff. So this is why the folks are still striking. But also the problem is this, streaming is not that profitable. Remember when everybody got sick of paying for cable and went to Netflix? Well, they cut the cord because Netflix was way more affordable. In other words, less profitable for the company. Offering low subscription fees to lure in new subscribers means that streaming generates only about one sixth of the income per household compared to traditional TV. While appealing to consumers, streaming platforms like Disney Plus struggle to match the earnings of cable companies, which was fine for Netflix in a market with little competition. But now these companies are fighting over subscribers. It could have been more profitable had everybody left their streaming stuff with Netflix and just charged Netflix to license it, right? That would have been more profitable. But unfortunately, you have Bob Iger and so many others trying to start their own streaming networks like Disney Plus and others. And because those were a failure, now you have Disney Plus having to, you know, um, collaborate with ESPN and Hulu and all this other stuff. Whereas if they would have just left it with like Hulu and Netflix, it probably would have been better. But once they started trying to create their own streaming services, trying to be greedy, now they don't really have the money. The money is not there. There's not a lot of money to be made in streaming. So it's not necessarily like a physical copy. And the other thing with streaming is that it's, it's not really clear. When they were selling DVDs and CDs, you could see, well, we pressed out this many DVDs. This many DVDs were sold at, you know, Best Buy and Target and Walmart. With streaming, you have no idea how many households have streamed a particular show. You're having to go off of the good faith and the quote unquote honesty of the streaming networks like Netflix and Hulu. It's like us as consumers, we shared passwords for years. You can't even trust the consumer. So you think I'm going to trust a multi-million dollar company? Absolutely not. The consumers were cutting corners for years. So I don't think Netflix and all these streaming companies are going to be super honest about how many streams, you know what I'm saying, were received on what particular movie or show. Because if they're all the way honest about it, they got to pay more money. There's no incentive to tell you the real numbers if I had to pay more money depending on how much streaming is going on. So a lot of this stuff is very murky and convoluted and it's crazy, but, but I think that's probably what's going to have to happen is that a lot of these celebrities are going to have to end up suing to try and get the real numbers and get what they should be paid fairly. You know, and it's sad. I feel like my whole childhood has just been a facade when it comes to television because for so many years, these people made, and I'm not saying necessarily Monique, but so many celebrities acted like they were that guy or girl, like they were just rolling in the money and they were just so rich because we saw them every week on Fresh Prince and Martin and the Parkers and on Moesha. And now we're finding out they weren't that rich that, you know, and even in syndication, they're not getting royalties. They're not getting paid. And I always had assumed that if you were on television, if you were in a movie and it's getting replay, you're getting a hefty bag. And now we're finding out that that bag is not as hefty. And a lot of them are not getting residuals. If they get them, it's not a whole lot of money. So it's just sad. It's just really sad that people who put their blood, sweat and tears into making television and movies what they are, they're not getting what they deserve. I came out to support the writers because as actors, we're only as good as the writing we get. And my son is on the picket line. Super worried, super worried, but I'm more worried about the crew members. You know, the makeup, the hair, the grips, the electrics, you know, people who work the long hours and have nowhere to go right now. Nowhere to go while we while we fight this out. I, I, I really think about them a lot today. I wrote War of the Worlds, the Steven Spielberg movie. That movie, I made a lot of money in foreign sales, in DVD sales, when it went to cable. Well, now a movie like that will just go on to Disney Plus, where they'll pay pennies on the dollar for what they used to have to pay in a competitive environment. And your residuals are calculated that way. So we're trying to figure out a way to calculate residuals in a streaming environment that lets people be competitive. So now you're hearing them complaining and getting upset. Now, Monique has been talking about this and, you know, pay inequality since 2016. And for a long time, she was by herself. You know, a lot of people in the industry dismissed her. They didn't pay her no mind. They thought she was doing too much. She was ruffling feathers. 
But now you're seeing a lot of folks in the industry now saying that they're not getting paid what they're worth. They're not getting residuals. They're struggling to maintain their bills. We had Billy Porter not too long ago talking about he has to sell one of his homes. The actor is selling his house, saying just like many artists, he's living check to check. In an interview with UK's Evening Standard, Porter says, quote, so to the person who said we're going to starve them out until they have to sell their apartments, you've already starved me out. It's always very interesting when people tell the truth. Sometimes they stand by themselves, but everything always comes back full circle. And I think with Monique, this is her full circle moment. So with that being said, y'all, I leave the comments and the question up to you guys. How do y'all feel about this situation? First, with Jeannie Mai and Jeezy, do you feel like, you know, maybe Jeannie's temper and certain things like that played a toll in the destruction of their marriage? Or do you feel what the source is saying, that it was because of family values and expectations? Or do you feel like the truth lies somewhere in the middle? Also, how do you guys feel about Monique coming out and basically once again blasting CBS and Paramount and demanding her equal pay, demanding what she should be paid? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Make sure you guys like the video. Feel free to share it. And last but not least, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.